Hell's bus. Young Leon. You are about to have the worst night of your life. You were pressured into staying late at work after one of your other employees called in sick. By the time you finish work, it's nearly 3 a.m. You briskly walk to the bus stop, keeping an eye out for anyone dangerous. And once there, you wait a couple others for the bus. You glance at the two others with you. They're both quite young. And you judge by the fact that they are both constantly giggling that they are drunk. They're probably just been par been at a party or something. As you can see, shimmering sequins peeking out of one of their coats. One of them is sporting a pastel pink hair. And it's not that bad. The bus arrives and you step on. The bus is nearly full. A rare occasion on an early Tuesday morning. You slip into the seat near the back and watch as what you believe at that point is pure chaos. There's a mother in the in what appears to be in her late thirties moaning at her young child Tilly, you learn, for continuously running off. Right at the back there is a group of five teenage boys who are messing about making a racket. They're about to have they're mainly talking about the recent football game that you didn't watch. Nearly near the front sits a pair of elderly women who are giggling to themselves quietly about how odd it is of them for being out so late. There's a family of four, two parents, a son and a daughter, and you hear the mother constantly moaning about some other family relatives of an organizing a family get-together for someone's birthday on a school night. There's a couple other adults who appear to be victims of the late shift, like you. Somewhere in all this chaos, someone manages to press the stop button by accident. It drags your focus away from the people and glance so outside. Nothing. It's pitch black. You feel shivers down your spine. It's unnaturally dark. The sky was clear and there was a full moon when you last glanced at it. Before you got on the bus, you glance out the front window and you see a faint outline on the road ahead. But that's it. You try to imagine how hard the driver must have be having it right now. The bus grinds at, and the door jolts open. Everyone turns to look at the door, just stares at for a minute, waiting for whoever has pressed the button to get off. But they never do. Someone should get off or else someone will get on. The bus driver speaks in a gruffy voice with no emotion. You don't like it. He doesn't sound right. You slowly raise your guard. What do you mean if someone doesn't get off, someone will get on? The mother of two children snorted. Why don't you just start driving already? It's clear no one needs to get off here. Someone probably just hit the damn button by accident. She crossed her arms in empathy, her annoyance. I mean that if one of you doesn't get off, someone will get on, and you don't want that to happen. The bus driver responded. His voice was still devoid of all emotions, almost like a robot. If you were him, you would have been irritated by her attitude. Everyone quickly broke into a discussion on who would get off, and you quized everyone on whether or not they pressed the button. While everyone was detached, no one noticed Tilly accidentally dropped a toy, and having it roll out of the bus, she leaves the bus for no more than two seconds, but by then it's too late. The doors have shut, and the bus driver continues to drive, leaving Tilly stranded in the pitch, pitch black of night. Everyone notices when the bus driver slides into motion. Again, Tilly's mother is quick to dash to the front, asking the driver to stop. He shakes his head. A high-pitched shriek is heard. Tilly's mother demands the bus driver stop, as so she fears the worst. But the bus driver says, He won't stop. She bangs on the door and demands it to be open, looking out the void of plane. The doors won't open. She presses the button until he reaches. She presses the stop button until you reach the next stop. About five minutes later, she's quick to dash out into the darkness, and again the door shuts. The moment she has gotten off, a few seconds later, you hear another scream. This one, slightly deeper and more mature. You can tell it belonged to Tilly's mother, and you quickly gather the first 
was from Tilly. It summed it up. Leaving the bus was dangerous. No one pressed the stop button, and after about six or seven minutes, they reached the next stop. The door was still open, and the bus driver just sighed without emotion, which he had thought was impossible. A woman stepped on. She was beautiful, her blonde hair bouncing perfectly, and she was slim with decent curves. If anything, you would say she was an angel. She wears a black stripe, strapless dress that ends mid-drift, and her red heels sparkle. She glances at you with bright blue eyes and smiles slightly with cherry red lips before walking to the back of the bus and sits in the row in front of you. Sitting in the row in front of the group of guys, nothing bad happens or so you thought. Halfway down the next stop, the light begins to flicker. You hold your breath and pray that it's just a co coincidence, but the flickering gets worse. Each time the light goes out for longer before turning back on, then finally they turn off for a whole minute before turning back on. When they finally turn back on, your nose is suddenly suffocated by the overwhelming stench. You look around at your eyes as you meet. With the burning colors, red, blood, three people in the bus have been slaughtered. One of them is from a group of guys, and one of the people who were heading home after work is another victim. The final is a girl who is wearing a black sequin dress. Her pink hair, her pink hair friend is crying, is a crying mess. To her and the group of guys are just shock, unable to form another word, and just continues opening and closing their mouth. The children are wailing as with their parents, making an effort to console them. To put it simply, everyone is a mess. It is a miracle no one had a heart attack at the sight, however. Corner of your eyes, you notice the beautiful woman is still smiling slightly, and you remember the driver's warning. You killed them, you say simply. Rising from your seat and looking dead straight at the woman, your emotions are all over the place. Aren't quite sure how to feel. They would have been dead anyway, just like that little brat and that cow. Her voice venomous, like she had been dipped in every kind of poison in existence. Now if you don't mind, my stop is coming up soon. She pressed the stop button and rise from her seat. Her heel clicks as she walks towards the dead bodies of the, one of the guys. She easily lifts him and slings him over her back. She then moves to the worker and tosses him over her shoulder. She then moves to the final victim and grabs her by the hood. All the three dead bodies are soon with her by the bus door. The bus slows and she steps out. Everyone can only watch, too scared to say anything. The color red is practically everywhere by now. And you feel queasy, but you hold it in. As you sit there, you suddenly find the pink-haired girl clinging to your body. You take in a large, unnecessary gulp of the air, and finally move to pl place your hand over her head, stroking her hair slightly as she sobs uncontrollably. What do we do now? The other workers broke the silence. If we press the button, someone will have to get off the bus, and will probably die. But if we don't press the button, someone will, like her will might get on. The workers rubbed her, her eyes slightly. I'll get off, my dear. Don't worry, one of the old women answered and closed her eyes. I don't have much of a life left anyway, she added. You can't help but feel slightly un useless, but you can't do anything about it. You want, you still want to live. I'll go after her, other elderly woman stated. She's right, it's better one of you youngsters get to live than one of us oldies. She nudged her friend and they laughed with each other, but it's slightly forced and you can hear their fear. No one commented on it. They don't want to lose a chance to live. They both do as they had said. They would be. As the driver drives away, after a second elderly woman had gone off, you can hear her sobs. She mentions her husband and you feel slightly ting of regret that the woman has to die. But there's nothing you can do. There's a tense silence and you know the question's coming again. But before any ask about it, the pink-haired girl rises and presses the stop button. 
Just as she was about to get off, she turns to face you. I loved her. She was my everything. Then she leaves, and as the bus leaves, you can hear a strangled cry. You bite your lips and look down at your hands. You're useless. You can't do anything. You are just... You are nothing more than a coward. However, you still cling to your life. You cling to your friends and you cling to your family. No one else speaks until you are near the next stop. The mother presses the button. We're going to have to press it anyway. It shouldn't matter who presses it. Her children are clinging to her, her husband just looking at them with pity. All of a sudden she rises and lifts her children, both her children, a sickening grin on her face. Even if the kids survive, they won't have no hope without an adult at living. She easily pushes her daughter out of the bus stop, and the daughter is quick to turn, banging on the already closed door. You listen to her scream for her mother and her father, but the mother turns a blind eye. Her daughter is screaming loudest at yet. Her son begins to fight in her mother's arms, but it's hopeless. The father tries to assist, but he hesitates. During all the fuss... The mother manages to press the button again, and the son is thrown out of the next stop. He watches his mother disappears through the glass, and with a look of disbelief, his tears strain his rosy cheeks as the bus driver drives on. All he can hear is a desperate, Mother! before calling out, before the voice fades entirely. You've watched the father get off the bus next, he, his head hanging down. The mother tries to stop him, but it's fruitless. You know that he's definitely getting off. He couldn't deal with the guilt of not stopping his children from being killed. His screams are short and more from the pain than the fear. The mother hasn't moved from her spot kneeling on the floor since the last stop. So you take it upon yourself to press the button as the bus stops next. So you take it upon yourself to st press the button as the bus stops. You watch the woman drag herself out off the floor and throw herself on the off the bus. She doesn't bother to stay standing, so let her body hit the floor. You hear the clash and hear several screams as it di as she disappears. There's only six of you left, not including the driver. The guys had been quiet for a while, but now you can hear them mumbling between each other, as if discussing something, and at one point, one of them turns and presses the stop button. You can't make out what they're saying, so you wait while nervous. At the next stop, one of the guys gets up and heads towards the door. I guess I'm... I guess I'll be going, guy. First, guys. <laughs> he grinned cocky. Don't be chicken. T don't be chickening out on us. We made a deal. He watched the door open. Oh, and Callum? I did do it with your sister, he said to one of the guys. And then jumped out before. Callum! Can comment on it. You hear his footsteps dashing away from the bus, but a loud grunt comes shortly after. You can. The guy you can only assume this Callum is up and packing, his face glowing red with anger. He smashes his hand against the button, causing you and everyone else to flinch. Then you. Reach to the next stop, Callum jumps out without saying anything and runs to the left. You hear a grunt first and a scream then you are f that has been forced out. You notice that the screams are scaring you less and less. Each time you ca reach the end of your journey, another guy gets off at the next stop, saluting the only guy. That was left as a group of five before cartwheeling off. You wonder why he would choose now to show off. But it's quick. But it's quickly ended by his long pain screech. You figure that it was probably to hide the fear. Just before the final guy gets off, you're approaching. You whisper into the air, "You better get off at the next stop and let the cutie live." Everyone falls. Everything falls into place as you glance over. There's only one other person on the bus. She wasn't as pretty as the murderer, but she was remarkably good-looking. Well, the murderer was hot. She was adorable. She was still wearing her uniform, which told you she was a chief or at least an assistant at a, for a restaurant. She, Her brunette hair is short and fluffy, curved 
around her face, curving around her face, straightening her fringe. Even though she sat down, you can tell she's short. You're brought out of your thought by the guy moving to the door, blowing a kiss at the girl, before getting off and walking into the uncharted, changing pitch black. You look. You hear a small, low-pitched scream from, from him before it's cut short, and you feel as though he cuts it off to avoid looking weak. As the bus continues, you see the girl rise and walk over to you. She sits down next to you after pressing the button and looks deeply into your soul, her chocolate eyes. Which of us two is which of us two is next? She simply asks. Her voice is sweet, and it surprises you that you didn't notice earlier when she last spoke. The guy, the last guy, the guy wanted me to go off next. You reply. You're slightly annoyed that you, they wanted you to die, but you, but you guess the reason is really pretty. But you guess the reason is pretty simple. You're not some cute girl, really. She moved a little forward. Maybe we should play a game to decide. That way, no one can complain. You notice her playing with the edge of her apron slightly. She's scared. She doesn't want to die. What game? You ask her, and begin forming a little list of possible games. There weren't many for doubles without an equipment required. Maybe just rock, paper, scissors. She gestured with her hand in everything. She gestures with her hand, and every time it stopped at one of the actions, you see her hands shaking slightly. First of three, you offer, wanting to draw out the time as much as possible. She only nods and responds. You both place your hand out. She wins the first round after scissors beat your paper. She wins the next round with her rock. The third and fourth were both draws. You both use paper in the first round, then rock in the second. You win the fifth with scissors, and then the sixth with paper. The seventh was a draw. You both look at each other with a sense of unease. This round would decide who would die next, or end up being another draw. Time after time, to slow down you, as you both call out rock, paper, scissors. Before speeding it up again, and before you know it, you are stood watching her get off the bus. As the door shuts, you can hear tears begin to roll down her face. She screams as quiet and high pitch, but it still exists. You turn as you suddenly begin to hear music. I thought seeing as it's just you and me it would be nice to play a bit of music. You frown as you learn the, the song is none other than Highway to Hell. Hey, relax a little. Go press the button. You earned it. The driver's voice is shown more emotion now, and he seems happy. You hit the button and sit near the front of the... as you... Wait for the next stop, the final stop, stop to arrive. You wonder about what you're going to say to your family when you, when you next see them. The stop finally arrives all too quickly, and you rise and you head to the door, but you are not met with the bus stop. No, 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 not more darkness. You don't get off, won't get off. Behind you, the bus driver is laughing. He's a, he is... He's in hysteric. I'm sorry. Did you really think you would be walking away with from this alive? His voice is full of hatred, and you can tell he's mocking you. Maybe if the harlot... Maybe if that harlot hadn't gone on earlier, you would have. But the moment she stepped on, you threw away your, everyone's lives. He leaned back. Originally, it was meant to be two people who survived. You and me. But fate's cruel. I'm sorry. He leaned back. Or you could have pushed me off earlier and had some uh, one else drive this dump. But you alone couldn't get me off this bus now. You would have needed those guys from earlier. So all this has been for nothing? You look at your hands. Everything you had done since you had gotten on this bus was for nothing. You just watch. Others people kill themselves for you. For nothing. But hey, even if you sur had survived, you would have been nothing but a murderer. You assisted everyone else in walking to their death, and now karma has come to bite you in your uh, in the ass. The bus driver leans back. I would say that you deserve this because all 
You are as a heartless coward who only cares about themselves. You think you did this for your family and your friends? No, this was all for you. Those people had families too. You just let them walk to their death so, and you listen to every one of them scream! You tremble uncontrollably, and as much as you wanted to argue, you know every single word that had come out of his mouth is the truth. You turn to the door. This is your stop. No matter what you could do, attempt to do, you would die. You glance once more to the driver before stepping off. It's pitch black, and you look back to only see more nothingness. The bus is gone. You feel your heart rate rising. As you glance around, you can hear noises. You see nothing. And all of a sudden, you feel as your body is torn to pieces, as if nothing more than a sheet of paper. Within seconds, your body is destroyed. You are now dead.